Hey, welcome to Nimcon Solutions. Jake here, quick build video. I'm putting together a, the 3D printed, 3D printed case I got from Rockland. This one is uh, printed by Quantum Shadow 3D uh, for Rockland, and it is advertised basically as kind of the weather resistant case. And I <clears throat> wanted to just do a little non-scientific testing of that the bottom gasket here appears to be TPU. Um, and definitely will not withstand uh, being immersed when I did immerse it in a bottle and I'll throw in kind of a clip of that water um, the air bubbles were uh, observed escaping out around the antenna which was because it was the water was ingressing through this bottom seal now I, pro I had it pretty dang snug uh, but maybe a little more might have prevented it, but it's not designed to be immersed in water. They don't have any IP uh, rating on it. It'd be more as in this, it's a splash protection. So, you know, you're out in a gentle rain. It's not directly getting like, you know, pounded by, you know, rainfall or other water, you know, spray it might resist a little bit of that but like not directly so it could be on your body partially covered or something like that where it's not directly getting uh, and definitely not dunked down into the water uh, there is one plus side you know because it does have somewhat of a seal right uh, you know you're going to get a little bit of if you dropped it in a, you know a, a body of water it might float for a little bit so it might give you a chance to recover it but Anyways, I just kind of wanted to quick check that. I'm sure there's ways you could potentially maybe increase the water resistance, but the bottom still has to be removable because you need to be able to access your whiz block and charge or flash it or, you know, do maintenance, whatever. So we're going to put this together. I'm going to start carrying it around. I'm not going to install a GPS module on it uh, at this time. I might in the future, but uh, right now I'm just going to work it with these the base uh, rack whiz block and a 2000 milliamp hour uh, battery here it's going to go in here that's all going to slide up in there and then we'll use of course my kind of go-to te connectivity uh, and this is the 868 megahertz antenna uh, but i'll put links for all this stuff down below so let's put this together Okay, so the first thing you see I did there is I just popped the board in to this cradle that goes in the, and it, not sure if this is their intent, but I kind of thought it seemed like it might be as you kind of pry this back and put that in there. And then I'm gonna put two screws into those holes right there, right in here. And those are just screwing into the plastic material here so I wouldn't try to like tighten them really tight I would just leave them you know just snug and then <clears throat> we'll install the battery slide it in and be up and running okay so <clears throat> so you take the screws a uh, little jeweler style screwdrivers work great for this and then start it in there Might require a little pressure to get it to start in the plastic basically because you're threading you're threading the plastic now but once it starts to spin a little easier it's even working for me so both screws installed right there that's just going to help it like from moving around when you know because you need to be able to access this to charge reset it flash the firmware updates that type of thing so you want to uh, be able to do that. And then there's the location for, if you decide to install a GPS module, you to, you put the antenna, if you have that square style antenna that typically comes with the rack kits, it's gonna go right there. And then simple um, thing is, first thing you wanna do is check orientation. 
see you already have their pigtail there. Okay, it goes in like that. So now what I, I'm going to do is install the antenna. And I almost forgot I got to do the Bluetooth antenna too. So, all right, so I've got that IPEX connector there. All right, so in Bluetooth antenna, it's going to go on. And then we have that 3M adhesive there. Figure out kind of how we want to do this. Um, definitely want the Bluetooth, you know, somewhere oriented so that it's easy to connect with. You know, I'm actually not going to use that this time around. Let's see how that works out for me. So we'll go ahead and install the antenna because I'm going to apply power here shortly and you should have the antenna connected. Short term, probably not going to cause any damage, but no reason to risk it. So your battery, as you notice, right, always check orientation, even if you buy these. So red, right, you're positive. Look for the red, like little paint mark right there on this side of the J. Uh, what are they, JT or whatever, 2.0, 2, .0, 2 millimeter plug. It is correctly oriented. And you'll probably see, see the green light just light up. So, okay, I know that's, this has some juice to it. Let's see how that lays in there. And then you're gonna have to kinda play around with this earlier. Kinda have to play around with that. The wires definitely make it, sorry, if I'm not holding the camera there, but you can see we got the wires kind of sticking out here, so I'll take a little, little tool here and hook that back in here. Go in there. <laughs> all right, so that's all kind of tucked away. You have this little face plate here. You're going to put that over. So you still have access to, you can see the reset button. This is, it is definitely reset, so you'd need something to be able to uh, reach it. And then you can see the LED for indications. And then we're gonna take these long stainless steel screws and hopefully line those up. Use our screwdriver again. I know what I forgot to do. All right, what did we forget to do? There's a button. Well, I forgot to put the button in. So guess what? Next time around, because I'm sure I'll have this part again, I'll put that button in. Right now, to hit the reset, I'm gonna have to use a tool. That's okay, because the only time I'm going to do that is when I put it into boot mode right now or after this to install firmware or update firmware. And, and I don't have to. We'll see what version's on here. Uh, how old is this version? But um, Once again, you are screwing into plastic with metal. Metal is harder than plastic. So after you start getting some resistance, be cautious. Uh, don't use a power tool on this. Now, if you've got one of those fancy electric screwdrivers that's meant for this type of work, then you're probably not watching this video, but maybe. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Just as soon as it starts, you feel that sharp rise in torque or resistance. Just a little snug there. Good lineup, good print. Then we're going to screw on the cap, and you now have a weather resistant case. No LED or anything, which is not necessary, especially if you're using a cell phone. You have a nice little loop here. I'm impressed with it. It's nice and compact. I think it's great for portable options, for outdoor options. Obviously not waterproof, but it is good for 
most applications. So if you're interested, of course, the links will be down below. Uh, check out our social media, subscribe, like, follow along for more good emergency communication solutions. Thanks for watching.